Hello folks, so I'm doing what I said and I'm going for quantity this year. I just want to capture as many objects as I can and not worry too much about processing and I've got three more Galaxy pictures to show you, all captured with my Celestron Rasa and One Shot Color Camera. And I'm in an interesting position right now because I've actually wrapped up all of the open projects I had so I get to start fresh on both telescopes. And the last one I captured on this was the Medusa Nebula. This is the Explorer Scientific Scope, and you might have seen that in the previous video. But um, now that I'm all finished, um, I'm going to take a little time right now because all of my rigs are in need of maintenance. They're all malfunctioning in some way, so it's, it's finally time to start working on them. So this setup here with my EQ6R Pro mount is in need of some maintenance because I waited a little too long and this clutch here for elevation or um, altitude it, it doesn't even work anymore it's completely stripped and uh, so I, I think I can just take this clutch off and maybe I can replace a nut in there I waited a little too long now I can't even do polar alignment and I would say part of the blame for that is me I, I I really didn't use it correctly but because I know so many other people that have the same issue I kind of blame Skywatcher who makes this mount um, it's, it's I think it's a very poor design that the fact that so many people can strip the clutch that easily so anyway let me show you my next problem okay so here's my my CGX setup and the problem I'm having with this setup is I notice when I point my Explorer Scientific Telescope too low to the horizon, my stars become a little bit warped, a little bit elongated. And the thing is, I forgot to look at the guiding when that was happening. So it could either be the guiding, or it could be maybe I have a little bit of sag going on in my imaging train. And my draw tube is almost completely maxed out. Maybe it would help if I brought the draw tube in a little closer so I did buy an extension from Moonlight Focuser that can go up here that will help me bring the, the, the draw tube in almost two inches. And maybe that will help if there is any sag. And another problem I'm having is my electronic focuser is getting stuck sometimes during uh, a refocus routine. So uh, it's helped in the past where I wipe down the draw tube, but maybe I should also wipe down the rollers or maybe I should even increase the tension here. I'm not sure yet, but I want to play around with that too. So that's, that's what I need to do to this setup. And the other issue I have is with my solar setup, which is in the garage right now, but my USB connection all of a sudden keeps dropping and I didn't change anything with the setup. I even tried replacing the hub and that didn't seem to help. So um, I've got a lot of debugging to try and find where that issue is coming from. So let me show you the images now. Okay, this is the first of three galaxies I wanted to show you. This is M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. And this galaxy is deceiving when I see it in other people's pictures because it's easy to forget how faint this target actually is. And even though I captured it with about five and a half hours of exposure time, I probably could have gone 10 hours. I think it needed it, but I'm still happy with how this picture came out. And as usual, when you're in, in galaxy season, when you're capturing these, there are so many other galaxies in the background. Like this one up top looks like a really nice edge-on galaxy way off in the distance. This is probably a galaxy right there. And this is the one that really surprised me down here. Uh, I, I, I don't know the, the catalog number, but I, I'll have to look it up. But I didn't know this large galaxy was even there until after I stack my images. So, well, uh, what do you think? Okay, let me move on to the next one now. Okay, here's the next picture I want to show you, and it's M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, and I captured this one with about six hours of exposure time, and unlike M101, this thing is really bright. In fact, it was so bright, I actually tried to turn the brightness down, but it, it didn't look so good when I did that, so it is what it is. It's practically popping off the screen, but it's a really cool galaxy, and it actually has a companion galaxy right here, and scientists believe this companion galaxy actually passed through the main disk 
about 600 million years ago and then did it again about 50 million years ago. So I didn't know that until I, I was researching it um, a little while ago. Okay, let me show you the next one. Okay, now here's the third picture I wanted to show you and I captured this with about four hours of exposure time. And this is actually my favorite of the bunch, probably because I was not familiar with these galaxies until I captured it. And this one here is M90, about 60 million light years away. And this one over here is M89, an elliptical galaxy about, about 50 million light years away. And again, this, this picture is riddled with more galaxies. Off to the left here, down, down here. And I, I actually thought maybe I was capturing something similar to the Leo triplet, but these galaxies are a little too far away to get detail on to, to really compare to the Leo triplet. But it was still a really cool capture. And the other galaxies are just all over the place in this galaxy, probably hundreds of millions of light years away. And I, I really love the glow around M89. I, at first, I thought this was a halo that you might see around bright stars. But no, that's, that's the glow from the galaxy. So, all right. That's all I've got to show you guys. Thanks for watching. And I will see you later. Hello, folks. Hello, folks. This is, uh, this is Chuck. <laughs> Hello folks, so I'm doing, yeah. Hello folks, so I'm doing what I said, I'm going for quantity this, uh, this year. Hello folks, so I'm doing what I said, and I'm going for quantity this, this year. <laughs>